Hi, everybody. How are you? This is Nancy L.T. Hamilton. Moi. And some of you may notice my hair looks fabulous today. <laughs> That's because I have a wig on. Now, I do like a good wig. This wig is a bit much. Check this out. My mother, for some reason, used to call anyone who had long hair Gwendolyn. So I'm Gwendolyn. It's like 10 degrees warmer on my head right now. But I wish I had hair like this. Ugh. Anyway, a couple new things here. What we're going to do is I'm filming on my iPhone since I stupidly left my camera in the airport and someone very kindly stole it. Um, it also had a lot of video on it, footage on it from my trip to Maui with my friend Gabby. So that's more devastating than the loss of the camera is the loss of the footage. If you ever watch this thief, send me the damn SD cards at least, please, please. Um, so anyway, I'm using my iPhone. I got a couple of little toys for it. I might even do a little video and show you some of the stuff that I got for it. Um, I have a lavalier mic on right now. So hopefully the sound quality is better. And this really cool swirly bendy thing to hold the camera because I'm trying to go on my own here. I'm trying. I'm trying to get out more videos. So anyway, so I'll shut up. And um, I just want to cover briefly what we're going to talk about today. Um, I get a lot of emails and I am just either I'm really scattered um, I don't do anything all day, which I doubt, or um, I just get a lot of emails. And I thought what I would do is answer some of the emails on air, so to speak, to share it with my answers with everybody. So I'm going to go grab my papers and come back here and we're going to get going with Gwendolyn. I can't flip it. My wig might fall off. So me and my wig are back and we have question number one from Diane, which is probably the only one I'm going to cover in this video because it's a big one. Um, Diane says, I love watching your videos, smart girl. The best are when you add a mustache and never mention it. God, probably shouldn't have said anything about the wig. Um, I'd like to ask a question about sizing a ring. I need to make a ring larger for a friend. It's an old Native American Indian ring that's way too small for him. I have seen several videos of people who cut at a section of metal to upsize the piece while soldering the shank with the ring, mostly buried in wet sand and are covered in heat resistant stuff with the stone still in it. But I'm not willing to chance that technique with a family heirloom custom job. So how do you res resize a sterling silver ring with a softer stone in it? Does the whole ring need to be remade? And how to remove the stone without damage? If I F up the bezel while working the stone out, then I would have to start over anyway, right? Help, help, help. Thanks, honey, I just love watching you. And if I miss this being explained somewhere in one of your videos, just dope slap me and leave me home. <laughs> I love this woman. <laughs> so. My first recommendation is don't do it. Don't repair it. Have this person who loves this family heirloom, send it to a jeweler who has the equipment and skills to do it. I've done this myself where I have resized rings for other people and it has been nothing but a nightmare in my life. Um, so saying that, I would say that's your best choice. If you have to have to do it for some bizarre reason, um, I'll go into that in a little bit, but um, really just don't do it. Don't do repairs unless you're getting paid. This is not a charity business. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm going to go on and we're going to talk about um, taking a stone out of a bezel. Um, what kinds of rings, shanks that you basically can't resize, how to resize a ring to make it larger, some tricks to make it smaller, um, and whatever else comes to mind. So I'll be right back. I have to get set up. So um, I mentioned in the last section that it's um, not really a lot of fun to remove a stone from a ring, especially a cabochon. Here's what happened with my opal. 
that I tried to take out of this ring because this ring is too sweaty. Um, anyway, the, the opal cracked and I'm basically going to have to reshape this into a new, new opal. Um, I started by prying with this. I clamped it into my GRS ring clamp and started pushing this around, but these are not very strong. They tend to chip. I also used a shop knife, bench knife, and to pry this out. Um, this is, you've got to be really careful you don't slip and cut your finger off. So bezels, you know, this wall is pounded in. It's work hardened. And the stone underneath may be soft. This could scratch this or crack like this. So taking, you know, you've got to be pretty desperate to take it out. Um, I've had to do this mostly when I've destroyed the ring or I've decided I hated it. And uh, then and usually end up destroying the setting and hopefully not the stone. Um, okay, let's see. If you are lucky enough to have a ring that you want to resize that has prongs, this is a great tool. Um, it's a prong lifter. I think all the jewelry supply places carry it and it's designed to get up underneath the tip of the prong and then pull it up. Um, so this is a really nice tool. This is one that's made by Pepe. So that's that. And then, um, where is it? So if you, you want to stretch your ring like a quarter to a half size, you can use these little inexpensive uh, ring stretchers. I think I got this one from Harbor Freight. So if I wanted to stretch this, one of the things you want to take into account is how thin is the ring shank. If it's very thin, like this is bordering on kind of dangerous. Because um, number one, these are probably work hardened by now, either by the, the jeweler hammering them into shape um, and or wearing them over a period of time, especially with an older ring. You've got to worry about cracking on this. So ideally, if before you did this, you would anneal it. Uh, I'm going to show you a way to anneal it if it has a stone. But one, saying that, you need to re remember that every time you do this, you're taking you're taking the stone's life into your hands. But let me go back and show you how this works. So you just slide the ring on here levelly, and then put this little rod in here and give it a whack. And I, you, you have to give it a couple whacks. And I would um, turn this, you might have to pound it off with your hammer too, to turn this just like you would on a ring mandrel because this is a conical shape, right? So that's that easy part there, and I will move on to the next subject. I almost forgot um, one of the main ways for stretching a ring. Um, I have a steel uh, jeweler's ring mandrel here. I almost forgot what it was called, oh my God. Um, I also made these little doohickeys. It's just a piece of brass shaped and bent on the edges and what that does is it keeps the mandrel from heading like this because usually when it's clamped in here it's only held on one point so it pivots so i made i have two of these one on each end to hold the mandrel in place if i can remember which way to turn it to tighten it i'm good so once you get it in place you need to think about the kind of ring you're doing you don't if you're working with a ring that has a very thin shank or very narrow here you don't you want to be careful that you don't overstretch it so much that you make it fragile and unwearable um, this one i've already kind of stretched but i'm going to use it as an example anyway i'm running out of rings that are i'm willing to pound on um, you also have to because these are channel set in here you need to keep the hammer well away from this area because hammering on this will open that area up and the stones can fall out so Anything with a stone, you want to stay far away from the stone. So I'd only be working on the area, you know, three mil, four millimeters back to here. Um, when you have a band like this that has a pattern on it, you got to be careful that you don't smash your pattern. And you also have to realize that if you're hammering this, like this is now hammer textured, it used to be a half dome, that you may lose some of that half doming. Um, this, this is not a great technique using the steel hammer on this uh, for obvious patterns or anything that has a raised texture on it. Um, this one I could get probably get in here with small like a small barrette file which has no uh, teeth on the back. 
to reshape it into more of a dome shape. But honestly, uh, I probably wouldn't. I'd sell it as a hammered texture. So normally you can stretch with a leather mallet. That's what this is, or wood or plastic mallet. About one size, which would be a quarter of a size. This ringer mandrel here is marked with um, quarter and half sizes. And this ring is at a 10 right now. You can tell because this line here with the size above it will indicate uh, what size it is, but that line should, in a wider band especially should be in the middle of the band. Um, so this is a little bit hair past a 10. And uh, I don't know if it can still stretch since I've already pounded on it a bit. But what I'm going to do is just show you how I would hammer a, a regular band on a ring mandrel. Turning the ring shank as I hammer. And then I pull it off and flip it in the other direction because you're working on a cone shape here and you don't want your ring to be cone shaped. This gets a little tight on here. Sometimes you have to pry it off. Now conversely, especially if you, let's say I wanted to stretch this even more, I would use a steel faced hammer. Um, you want it to be mirror shiny because anything that's on here will transfer onto here. But I could even shrink this a little bit if I brought it into an area where there's a lot of space around it and kind of bring it in on itself a bit. I don't know how much you're going to be able to shrink it, but it is a possibility. Um, yeah, I kind of brought that a little bit back to a 10, but if you want to stretch it, you're going to put it on the wider end and hammer. I try to place the blows pretty much right one right after the other. And try to keep track of where you started so you know. And that once again gets flipped. Now you can anneal these too by using that method I showed you with the water and uh, putting your the stone or if you if you're you know, if you're trying to anneal something like this, you would put it in the water. This band obviously can just be annealed normally. Um, and that'll help too, because these do get work hardened or they come work hardened, especially if it's a ring that's been worn for years and it has a lot of wear and tear on it. So that's that. I'm just going to hammer away. La, la, la. Now I've got a 10 and a half. Lucky me. My wig and I are back. So here's the tip on how to anneal and solder with a stone in, ta in place. Um, you want to take caution if you're using opal or wood or pearl or any kind of organics. Anything that's very heat sensitive, this water will heat up. Um, it's not going to get to boiling, but you could probably run up laser thermometer on it see how hot it actually gets before you do this um, something like this is easy it's like cake you can even put this in the kiln but I'm pretending that this is saying I don't know an amethyst so I've got my dapping block down here and I put water in it and sufficient amount of water to cover the back of the stone as well as the face of the stone you see that <laughs> so um, and I'm just gonna do a little torching for you because this is so cute. Ah, I don't know if I know how to use this. Oh, for God's sakes. There we go. So come in this way with the torch, not like this because then you'll be aiming it right at the stone. So you wanna heat it from the back, front and sides. And let's see if I can turn it off. <laughs> Yay. So that's that's pretty cool. You can also use products like Rio Chill Gel, Wolf. Oh, I'm going to have to cheat. What's it called? Uh, wolf Soldering Clay. There's uh, Heat Shield and Cool Gel, among many others. Um, or you can use water. You can use wet sand. There's lots of ways to get around this. Uh, but honestly, my favorite recommendation is take it to a jeweler. 
and not me. <laughs> if all else fails and I cannot get you to go take it to a professional besides yourself, you can resize it yourself. Um, I'm going to discuss how to make it smaller, feel smaller after this part, but this is how to make a ring larger. So ring mandrel with sizing marked on it. So this ring I've already checked so I know is a size 8. So let's say I want to make this a 9. So I've already marked, um, actually let me step back a hair. If you want to find out where the prior solder seam was, which is always a good idea, to saw you through the ring where the other jeweler saw, soldered it. Um, you put it in your little block or your chill gel or whatever you're going to use and um, heat up the shank up here and look for a grayed line and that'll be where the solder, where the seam is. And then use that as your guide for sawing. If, like this ring, which is a cheap mass produced, mass produced, mass produced ring, um, I've just kind of kind of found the center of the down at the bottom of the ring and I marked it and saw sawed it sawed it so now what you need to do is um, you need to open this ring up so that you can measure the distance between the two pieces that will make it the right size so I'm going to take it onto my um, ring mandrel hold this up so you can see and slide it down and then I'm going to turn it over and do it again. And I'm going to keep slide and slid. There's the nine up here somewhere. So I've slid past the nine. And I want this to just naturally stop on the nine. Which it did. <laughs> if it doesn't and then you've got made it too big, you're going to have to close it up, use a half round plier and kind of squish it back in. You don't also have to use a mandra. You can use pliers to open it up if you know the interior diameter that you want the final ring to be. So once you've opened this up as this is, take your handy dandy calipers here. Digital is nice because you don't have to do much thinking. Zero it out, make sure it's closed. And then you know this end you never use? Well, now you can use it. So what I'm going to do well, I can measure, I don't need to measure this measurement, the interior diameter. What I need to measure is this gap here. So, let's see. <laughs> I gotta turn it around. Put it in there. Turn it around. This ring shank is so thin that the uh, ends of the calipers barely, barely meet. Okay, so we've got 2.45 millimeters so I'm going to need a piece of material that's 2.5 millimeters wide when choosing your metal choose um, a piece that's bigger than 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 what you actually need because it's it's easier to have more metal to clean up than too little metal because you're not going to be able to add on to it I thought this piece was going to work but it's just a little too narrow and this is what gauge is this six it's two millimeters. No, it's two millimeters wide. I don't know what it is. Six by two. Yeah. So it's two mil. <laughs> God, I'm a math genius. It's two millimeters wide, and I, and I need a little bit more than that. So I need to go back to the drawing board and find something thicker. So while I do that, um, think about my wig. <laughs> so I lucked out here. Um, the 10 gauge is 2.55. And I needed a 2.54, so 0 0.0 hundredths of a millimeter. It's not going to make that huge of a difference, but you can sand it down on both sides and make it a little thinner, which is what I did. Um, and I'm probably going to keep it this size. It's wide enough for the shank. I want to make sure that the metal is centered on the shank. The shank, both ends are lined up with each other. And then I've got sufficient depth and width on here. So I'm not going to do this because um, it's too hard to film myself soldering over there and moving everything and I'm lazy and I have a wig on. <laughs> it's going to be my excuse forever. I'm never taking it off even though it gives me a headache. Um, so anyway, I would flux this, 
put it in my little dapping block, um, heat it up, then put my sol little sol tiny solder pot, tiny solder pallions on either side here and solder this. And then it's file off this extra in here. And then this, I would use a half round um, interior ring file to clean up this. If you are making a ring like big bigger, you might want to, before you cut the stock this small, uh, round it so that the curve matches the arc of the ring here. And you can bend it on your ring mandrel or you can find a dapping punch that is approximately the same size that you need. That is not. I don't know if I'm gonna, how long I'm gonna carry this hunt out. But so you could shape the material so that when you put it in, it's um, nice and curved. You can actually, in wider stock, you can actually just fit a piece in this way instead of having to hang out. It's just, you just want extra. You know, you don't want to have to like try to fit it exactly perfectly because it's just too difficult. So um, then you, yeah, then polishing and all that stuff, shaping, blah, blah, blah. So that's how you would make a ring bigger. Sometimes there are circumstances where you just can't resize a ring. Say it's too big. This ring, I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to do close-ups of these. I would not ever do this. It would be too difficult to resize. I'd rather make it over. This is a hollow tube. Would be a pain in the butt to do, especially with this gold stripe down here. Uh, this, forget it. And <coughs> what the heck? Just silver. And this ring shank wouldn't work either. Um, if it's a family heirloom, it's an antique, you don't want to ruin the provenance, provenance, something like that. I can't, I'm not a linguist or a mathematician. Um, you don't want to, you don't want to change it. So you can't. So it's too big, so what do you do? Well, one of the things I love to do, whether they're too big or not, when I make them, I make these big heavy rings that like to go hang like that. Um, so you can put these sizing balls in here. I think that's not the official name for it. What the heck is it called? There's sizing beads, excuse me. And this keeps, helps to keep the ring up on the finger. Also using a finger shaped mandrel will help a lot too instead of round because we do not have round fingers. Ours are like a top, wider on top, kind of rounded on the bottom. If you ever want to cut your finger off and look down it, don't do it. Um, what else is I gonna show you here? Oh, okay, so some of the options you have, and I'm probably gonna have to cheat because I don't use these things. I just look them up to tell you about them. So I'm going to bend my head. So let's see, there's, uh, okay, spring inserts or spring ring guards. And I've actually used these before. It's a little plate of metal that has little prongy things on it that you push up around the ring shank and it fits on the interior edge in here and adds dimension so that the ring fits a little better. Um, that's the other thing. Then there's ring guards. They have plastic kind of white people skin colored ones. I don't know if they have colors for all the varieties of humans there are. And that's a plastic thing that kind of fits in the finger, but it's pretty obvious that you've got it on there. Um, and then there are metal ring guards and what the heck are those other things called? I can't remember. But my favorite trick came from this woman who posted about uh, a solution she came up with or somebody else came up with or she borrowed, I don't know. I'm stealing it. Is she took a little uh, food grade silicone and um, let me find a good ex ring example here. And she with a probably a toothpick or something. I would like to chew the ends and make them like more like spatulas toothpicks. <clears throat> she took the silicone, she put the dab in here and she spread it up on the sides and with more in the middle and kind of graduated up around the edges. Let it set for 24 hours, check the fit. If it didn't work, she put some more in there. So 
I know that I've used silicone for when I had out my art car and it held things on it for, you know, going 65 miles an hour for years. So I would imagine that it would be a pretty cool way to make a ring smaller. Um, and if you hate it, you can always just get a little maybe exacto knife or something underneath it and peel it off. You can always replace it if it falls off. So those are some of the ideas for making a ring smaller. And if it's something that you can't resize and it's too small, I think you're out of luck. Take it to a jeweler. Hey! Well, that's my first Q&A. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Me and my wig had a good time, except it's time for her to go off my head. This is Nancy L.T. Hamilton. Thank you for coming. Don't forget to press that like subscribe very important and visit me on facebook and my website nancyltmhamilton.com thanks a lot bye